Welcome back to the center of it all. It's getting a little chillier here in Happy Valley. So Mel is going to be making her signature beef stew recipe that is sure to warm you right up. As a card-carrying carnivore and lover of root vegetables, nothing makes me happier than a bowl of beef stew. Uncork a bottle of red, slice me some bread, I'll follow you anywhere. Join me right here at the stovetop today while I make my extraordinary beef stew. In this eight quart stock pot, I've melted three tablespoons of salted butter into three tablespoons of vegetable oil. In this food storage bag, I've dredged three pounds of cubed chuck roast, not stew beef, a real chuck roast. I cubed it up into one and a half, one inch pieces and it's dredged in six tablespoons of flour, a teaspoon of salt, and a teaspoon of pepper. And as all stews start out, by cooking your protein, your meat, in some fat or oil. Get this heat turned up to medium high. And I'm gonna saute these beef cubes for about eh, five, six minutes until they're kind of lightly, lightly, ever so slightly browned and kind of swimming around in a little bit of gravy that the flour is going to make. The reason you don't want to just buy a generic package of stew beef is because you can't be sure of exactly what cuts of meat they're going to put in there. And chuck roast has the proper amount of marbling to render, a really t to render really tender cubes of meat in a stew. As this meat slightly browns, you're gonna notice that there's a little crust forming on the bottom of the pan, which is called the fawn, and that is full of brown bits. It's really fl fr flavorful, and you don't want to try to scrape that off at this point. It's exactly what you want when you're making a stew. This has been about five minutes, and there's some real, real light browning going on on the bottom of these beef cubes, or well, on all the sides of them. And what I'm gonna do, turn down the heat, and I'm going to, just for a few minutes, remove my beef I'm going to adjust my heat to a medium, lower than what I used for the beef. And I'm going to add eight ounces of large diced, that's about three quarters of an inch diced onion. That's a yellow onion. And I've got eight ounces of coarse chopped mushroom caps. These are white button mushrooms. And I'm going to saute these, stirring them almost constantly, until the onion is soft and translucent, but not browning, and the mushrooms have lost about three quarters of that, that, their moisture, and that's going to take another five or six minutes. This has been about five minutes. My onions are soft, my mushrooms are losing their moisture, and now I'm going to, leaving the heat right where it's at, I'm gonna deglaze this pan with some sweet red wine. Now I'm using some port because I really want sweetness to this. If you're using a dry red, you might wanna throw half teaspoon of sugar into it because you really do wanna balance your acids with a little bit of sugar in a soup or a stew. It's really important to know how to do that. So I'm just gonna add three quarters of a cup. And I'm not gonna rush this. It might take a minute or two could take up to three, but for the entire time, what I'm going to do is actually scrape the bottom of the pan and the sides of the pan to loosen all of that fond or all of the flavorful brown bits so that all of that flavor remains in our stew. Go 
going to add six cups of beef stock, unsalted. If you have homemade stock, use it. But if you've seasoned your stock, it will affect the end result of this beef stew recipe. Four tablespoons of tomato paste, which is about a half of a can, a half of a small six ounce can. Two packets of granulated beef bouillon. Choose a brand, any brand you like. Choose one with no MSG. Besides these two bay leaves, I've got a teaspoon each of salt, pepper, parsley, parsley flakes, rosemary, thyme, and garlic powder. Lots of seasoning. We're going to get this to a simmer by ratcheting the heat all the way up to high. And when this comes to a simmer, which is going to happen in about a second, I'm gonna partially cover this pot, turn the heat down to a gentle, steady simmer, and let this cook for exactly one hour before we add the rest of our vegetables. Yep, my stew's been simmering for an hour, the first hour is up. Now I'm going to add my vegetables. And I've got two pounds of peeled and really chunk, big chunk, gold potatoes. One pound of big chunked peeled carrots. Eight ounces of thick sliced celery. You know stews are supposed to be chunky. And 10 ounces or one bag of shredded cabbage, green cabbage, nothing else. Don't roll your eyes. It's what takes this stew over the top. Stir this all together. I'm gonna put the lid back on this pot, or partially cover it, and I'm gonna let it simmer again for about 45 minutes or until all of these vegetables are cooked through. When the days get shorter and the temperatures go lower, a hearty stew, thick, rich, and full of chunky meat and vegetables is the quintessential comfort food. For these and all of my recipes, just go to my website. Thank you, Mel, for another delicious meal. I cannot wait to try it, and I wish you guys could be in this kitchen and just smell this stew. It is so warm and inviting and perfect for a crisp fall day. But before I dig in, make sure to stay with us because we'll have more right here on the center of it all.